limit settings. If, when purchased, the actuator was fitted to a valve, the correct torque setting should have already been made, according to the valve maker's specifications. To confirm this, check whether the positions of the close and open torque or limit selectors, these, correspond with the table in the manual, this one. To explain this, if torque has been selected on either open or close, then this is the priority action which will automatically be carried out up to the amount in terms of effort set on this second dial. If torque hasn't been selected, however, then the opening and closing actions will be to the limits previously set. That is, unless there is a resistance in the valve's movements. Then torque, in terms of effort, as set on the second dial, will be applied automatically, up to the point where the torque switch stops the motor. In the table in the manual, only in the closing of wedge gate and globe valves is the torque setting specified. All the others are controlled in their actions of opening and closing by the already adjusted limit settings. If settings have not previously been made, proceed as follows. Set these two selectors. One reads close torque in one direction and limit in the other. And the other reads open torque in one direction and limit in the other. In doing so, you are choosing whether you want torque to operate as a priority. Now you have to decide how much torque to set. Maximum, minimum, or somewhere in between. We recommend you dial the close selector first to the minimum position and subsequently increase it if a tight valve shutoff is not achieved. The other selector, which controls opening torque, should be dialed to maximum, unless the valve maker specifies otherwise. If no opening torque protection is required, then its adjuster can be set to boost. Torque setting adjusters are fitted with locking tabs, which should be used to prevent tampering with original settings. Now if the switches have been correctly set, the actuator will respond to the preset limit and torque commands. And as we said earlier, to be up and running, this is all you need to know from this video. Let's briefly move out to a real live switch setting operation. At this water reclamation works near Birmingham, in England, the largest of its kind in Europe incidentally, 140 Rotorque actuators were installed some years ago on valves of many different types. Constant updating and improving, plus alterations to valves, are occasionally needed, with consequent resetting of actuator controls, like on this sluice gate, where the torque control is being reset to give extra effort during the initial opening, but position limit only is set at fully open. You will no doubt notice that the switch mechanisms being set was fitted with an add-on pack. Many here at Minworth have this addition. It simply provides extra switches and a potentiometer. To be capable of accurately controlling the necessary on-off functions according to the limit and torque settings previously described, the mechanism of this switch is necessarily somewhat complex in design. However, we'll now make an examination of the individual parts, and this should reasonably clarify these functions. Position limiting is achieved by the actuator counting the number of output revolutions from fully open to fully closed. A direct drive from the output shaft, here, rotates this threaded shaft. Along this shaft runs this traveling nut which trip switches at each end. This end is the close position and this the open. 
Looking at the close action first. When this nut reaches the end during the shaft's rotation, it is forced to rotate also by engaging these pins on the stop nut. At the valve closed end, the stop nut is in a fixed position on the shaft. This forced rotation of the traveling nut trip switches via this striker plate. Let's examine these switches. There are three in a pack for each end of travel. But only one switch in each pack is a control switch. The other two are auxiliaries for use by the customer in providing remote indication and interlock with other valves. The striker plate activates with two auxiliary switches first. Whether it then activates the control switch depends on whether the selector, this one, was set to torque or limit. If it was set on limit, then the striker plate would also trip the torque limit switch to stop the valve, fractionally after the auxiliary switches to ensure the remote position signaling occurs before the valve stops. If it was set to torque, only the auxiliary switches would trip and the valve would run until it's seated with the selected amount of torque. And please note, even when limit was selected, the actuator can still stop on torque if an excessive load occurs during travel. But the auxiliary switches will not be tripped, so remote indications will be correct. For the open limit, the action is similar, except that the stop nut is adjustable, as we saw during the switch setting demonstration. The close end is fixed, as we saw, so the open end needs to be adjustable to ensure that the distance of valve travel from open to closed is correct.